Our next inductee tonight taught us all to expect victory as he memorably took the purple to Pasadena. The head coach of Northwestern football from 1992 to 1998, Gary Barnett. Thank you. Um, I felt like I'm at Second City here for a minute. <laughs> Following David, I'll do my best. Lindsay, you didn't like those goggles. How about those blue blockers that are up there, huh? Those are pretty cool. Um, I like everybody that was in the athletic department between 1992 and 1998 to please stand, if you would, just so everybody can see who was here. So players, everybody that were, everybody was part of the program in 1992. <laughs> I hope you know um, the group that just stood up that this honor really is is as much about what you contributed uh, in that period of time as as it is about me. You know, Jim Phillips called me um, oh about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, and we've been trading phone calls. And uh, I, I thought it was concerning the reunion that we were having during the summer. And, and uh, I looked down on my phone, I saw Jim had just called because we had not been able to reach each other. And, and I called him right back and, and what he said to me, um, it, it, it stopped me completely. I, uh, and those of you who know me, I was speechless and that's not easy to, to, to have happen, but I, I just went limp. Um, maybe the proudest moment in my uh, coaching career to get the phone call that the committee had uh, wanted to put me in the Northwestern Hall of Fame. And, and uh, I literally cried. I literally had tears. And I couldn't talk to him. And Jim, I hope I do a better job tonight than I was able to do on the phone, because I know you had about 30 seconds of just no one saying anything. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate it so much. Uh, with me tonight are my son, Clay. Uh, his wife, Whitney, our two grandsons that live in Denver, Matthew and, uh, or excuse me, McAllister and Thompson, they're over there. And as I can understand, David, I think those are the only two kids in the audience. I, I don't know whether you read your, I don't see a lot of young guys out here, young people wanting to aspire uh, to what you've done, but you might read that audience a little bit better. <laughs> and, and Thompson's asleep, so you're gonna have to write him a note because he didn't hear you. When uh, President Weber and uh, Athletic Director uh, Bruce Corey uh, chose me uh, and took a chance on me uh, in 1991, in December of 1991, to come in and be the next head coach at uh, Northwestern, you know, they probably were a little nervous about their selection. And I, I actually know for a fact I wasn't the first choice, I was the second choice, but that's okay, it doesn't really make any difference. They would have all slept, the two of them would have slept a lot better if they knew that they were, they were getting me, but what they were really getting was the real prize, and that was, and is, Mary Barnett. And so I, I would like Mary to come up here with me We started in the coaching profession in 1971 in a high school in Colorado Springs and Mary started designing helmets, decals. We cut them out of contact paper. Um, when I had a decision to make as to whether or not I was going to stay in high school coaching or maybe go into college coaching and I was constantly talking about it and thinking about this and thinking about that, whether I should. She classically said to me and I quote, either poop or get off the pot. I'm tired of listening to all this stuff. So we, 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 we go to a small college in, in Durango, Colorado, and what do we do? We're making helmet decals again, and we're designing them, and, and uh, we're doing this sort of things. We went to the University of Colorado. She made all the covers for our scouting 
um, uh, guides each week scouting reports. She drew a picture for each week, a separate one. And then when we came to Northwestern, she got pom-poms put in the stadium for our games. She uh, created cat backers. We have a cat backers table here, back there. She would go to Nordstrom's. She went to Nordstrom's right after we got here, and she went in, and she, all she could see was Michigan and Notre Dame sweatshirts on the table for Christmas. So she found the Northwestern ones underneath the table. She pulled them out, put the Michigan and Notre Dame sweatshirts <laughs> under the counter, and sort of just walked out. Our first three games, we played uh, Lou Holtz uh, in Notre Dame down at uh, Soldier Field. Our second game, we played Tom Coughlin and the Boston College Eagles in uh, Chestnut Hill. And the third game, we played Bill Walsh in, in the Stanford Cardinals. So, uh, I mean, here, who, what is this? I'm playing three Hall of Famers the first three games out of the hat. And uh, they, I don't think I looked at the schedule. I might not have taken the, the game, the, the gig. Well, we're, we're flying out. We'd already lost to Holtz and we lost to Coughlin and we're flying out to Stanford and we're on the plane and in front of us is Ryan Padgett and Ryan was a freshman he was an offensive lineman and pre-med and I saw him read and I said Ryan what are you doing he says I'm, I'm reading my homework and I said oh yeah that's pretty cool I said what do you listen to and he said uh, classic music and this is a true story I said classical music and Mary looked over at me and so he got up about two minutes later and said where are you off to he says I'm gonna go brush my teeth and Mary goes, I want my daughter Courtney to marry him. <laughs> he reads books, he listens to classical music, and he brushes his teeth. <laughs> well, we got Boston College back the next year, 93, settled that chit. C-H-I-T, uh, that chit. Um, 1995, we settled up with Holtz, and then uh, uh, Fitzy, uh, Fitzy put a nail in him last year, so we're undefeated with Notre Dame in the last 20 years. <laughs> However, it did take us 23 years to finally kick Stanford's butt, which uh, Fitzy and the boys took care of this year, so congratulations to them. You know, uh, Jim Collins wrote a book called Good to Great, and uh, the theme, one of the themes in that book is, is getting the right people on the bus. When I got chosen to be on the bus at Northwestern in 1991, I got on the bus and I found a whole bunch of really good people on that bus. Uh, people who came to contribute so greatly to our success, people like Margaret Akerstrom, uh, Larry Lilja, Jack Freeman, Dave Innitt, uh, and I can go on and on and on about the, uh, John Painter, uh, all the people that uh, were part of that, uh, that whole program, Bill Jarvis, uh, Gene Yale. I mean, all these people were already here, and they were on that bus. And so uh, when we got on there, I realized uh, the strength that we really had to start going about getting this thing done. Then it was my time to pick who got on the bus. And I was able to go out and hire and find 12 remarkable men, you know, uh, our coaches. And uh, you know what, three of our honorees tonight are coaches. And, and what coaching does, what coaches do, is they take people where they can't take themselves. And I had the ability and, and uh, found those people. Jerry Brown, Ron Vanderlinden, Tim Kish, Vince O'Crew, Greg Meyer, Greg Brandon, Craig Johnson, Tom Bratton, John Riston, Jeff Jennick, David Hansberg, Steve Willard, those, those people and the kind of character that they brought to our meeting rooms, to our football team, um, were just incredible. And I, I tell you, I couldn't be more proud to have been associated with a group of men than I have been with uh, that group of, of men and what they were able to do with our players. And I know to this day, our players have appreciated what they have done for them and what that group of men um, uh, were able to teach them. 
and bring them along and how important it was. It doesn't sound like we had as much fun as the soccer team and, the, and those guys, but we did, you know, it just came across in a different way. I mean, but that, that looked like a lot of fun. I don't know about you guys, but it did look like a lot of fun. Um, and most of them, all of them stayed at least five years or longer. Two of them are still here. Jerry's still here 23 years later, and, and Jeff Jennick is still here 23 years later, as well as a lot of the people that were on that bus when we first got started. You know, we also brought a guy on board, and, and uh, uh, I talked to two of his sons today, Steve Musso. Steve Musso was a mentor. He was a teacher. He had a way of, of telling our players or getting our players to understand about more than just football, but how they think and, and how they visualize and, and how to make themselves better. He was instrumental to me. He was instrumental with our coaches, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, uh, Steve Musso and how important he was and has been to our program. And together, uh, oh, we had one other guy join the bus. And I, again, I'd be remiss not to mention this. And, and uh, uh, Rick Taylor found his way on our, our bus. And Rick Taylor brought an energy and a surliness that we needed. We didn't, we didn't need it all the time, but we, we needed his energy, his leadership. Uh, we needed his surliness at the time. And Rick, Rick did a great deal. For, for us during that period of time. He, he really was the extra energy boost that we needed uh, at, in the football and the athletic department. And, uh, you know, I thank, I thank him a lot for what he was able to contribute to our program for the people who had the guts really to hire him because it, it did take a lot. And Rick, Rick was one of those guys that made things happen. And uh, yeah, we owe him a lot. The, um, together, all those people that were on that bus and got put on that bus, we won two Big Ten championships back to back. And uh, we lost uh, one Big Ten game in that period of time. And that happened to be at Penn State. And Paterno had this way in which when we had the ball, he would turn on the snow. And when they had the ball, the snow quit. I mean, literally, every you'll turn on the film and you think you're in two different games. But uh, we, we had a chance there, but didn't. But that was the only game we lost in that period of time. And you know, what we did, you know, what happened here is, uh, was special. There's no question about it. And there's, there's people in this room that made it happen in, in a different way. They, they befriended our coaches. They befriended our players, they made their lives better. Uh, friends, Dean Kelly, Bill Simmer, John Yale, uh, Brian Stasiewicz, and I can go on and on about guys that just, you know, they were contributors, they helped, they really played a role. And we have an NGN program. And um, I met the first year with Daryl Zupanzik and Mark McCarrens, and I, they were our booster group. And I said, well, guys, how are we doing? What kind of money do we raise? And they said, well, we raised $27,000 last year. <laughs> and they said, well, what do you think we ought to raise? And I said, we need to raise $400,000 to even look like everybody else, be able to have uniforms, be able to have everything that we need. We need $400,000. And you know, I'll be damned if McCarran's and Daryl didn't find some way. You know, they didn't, they didn't buckle. Uh, they didn't blink. They said, okay. And they went to work. And they've created now, and so many more people are involved with it, and so many more people do so much with it now, and it's become a great entity here. But it was through the efforts of those two guys getting everybody off their fannies and getting involved. And, and I give those guys a lot of credit for, for creating that, that program in itself and helping us uh, as we went on our way. You know, we, we cultivated, and we planted, uh, we nurtured uh, Northwestern football and we, we got it out of the ground. And Randy Walker and Pat Fitzgerald have made something even more special out of it in the times that they've been here. They've been sensational. They've taken it to another level. We may have gotten it out of the ground, but those guys have taken it to the level now of national, a national reputation. Uh, everybody thinks of Northwestern and Northwestern football completely different because of the level that those two guys have been able to maintain and, and take it even further. So if, if I may, for all of us that were on that bus, 
we'd like to just so humbly and thankfully appreciate this honor tonight. Go Cats and expect victory. <laughs>